My name is Kaylin Fierro. I'm Danny Fierro. Uh, we met uh, freshman year of high school. I was a freshman, she was a junior, and uh, we had band class together, <laughs> unfortunately. And uh, we got married in June of 2010. So we're about to celebrate our five year anniversary soon. We had always said that we didn't think that we would start thinking about the idea until at least five years five in. years in. We started trying, um, which was now two summers ago. Two summers ago. Yeah. We probably tried for six six months. I asked a third party doctor and she asked her doctor and they both referred us to uh, the Florida Fertility Institute. So I just happened to go on um, their Facebook page because I, I knew that they had a Facebook page. I saw it in the office. So I went on there just to look at um, what people said because that's what people do. They go and find out to make sure, you know, that everything's good and it's a good office. So I went on there and they had it on their Facebook page. So I clicked on it not even knowing if we qualified, if we were considered new patients, if, if, you know, if we met the criteria, but I clicked on it and it opened up to the entry page. So I typed in my information and never thought about it again. I didn't even tell Danny that yeah, I, I did it. I he had no, no idea, idea that, that this, that this was even a possibility. I didn't think it was either. I mean, you see those things on Facebook and you're like, yeah, I, didn't, I didn't even think it was real. Like, you know, I just thought they just wanted more information. So I did it and I never thought about it again. And that was in November. Robin called and she told Kaylin that she had won. And then she called me, cause we worked over at the same high school. Uh, she called me during my fifth period. She's like, hey, um, there was a giveaway for IVF <laughs> and we won. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> And she's like, no, yeah, yeah, we won the contest. Uh, you know, they, they called us and we were the, we were the lucky winners. I, I, was, I was shocked. I was like, I didn't even know this was a real thing. When did you even fill this out? Um, but it was, it was a great uh, surprise. And when she did call, I was actually in the middle of teaching in the front of my classroom. My cell phone goes off, which <laughs> is bad. I mean, that's a really bad example, but I, and it went off and I looked at it and I said, I said this exact to, exactly to my students. I have to answer this, it's the doctor, I just have to make sure I'm not dying. <laughs> and I picked up the phone and I answered it and I went in my like back room. And then when I came out, of course I was like visibly like shaking and excited and they were my students go, are you gonna die? I said, no, I'm not gonna die. But I, I mean, I can't, I, I didn't even know what to tell them. Like, you know, they don't know, obviously. I'm not telling a group of, you know, 17 year old kids what's going on. So I just had to keep teaching, like, you know, everything was fine. And then as soon as the bell rang, I called his room and then he called his mom, I called my mom and it was, it was a good yeah. day, <laughs> a very good really day. <laughs> Next week, um, we start the first injections um, so we'll start that next week we there's a whole protocol of injections and then coming up I know I have some blood work and ultrasound appointments um, all leading up to our egg retrieval mm -hmm. and then a few days later our embryo transfers at this point we're going through our baseline ultrasound um, looking at the screen I see absolutely nothing yeah <laughs> um, they're just making sure everything was normal for Kaylin to begin starting the whole process. Um, we had our baseline ultrasound and blood work. Um, they're just making sure that nothing is happening um, before they start making everything happen. Um, so that was pretty much it. It was very quick and easy and no problems. And we'll wait to hear from Robin later to see what we start tomorrow. Second ultrasound, then that time uh, I had looked at Google to see like what they what the screen was supposed to look like. Um, so looking at the screen, I could at least pick out where my ovaries were at that point, um, and I could see just looked like a bunch of grapes. So I assumed those were follicles. Um, when Robin called, I was really relieved because um, the ultrasound. Um, woman had mentioned that she just mentioned it very casually like oh you have a complex cyst and of course in my mind I'm like what does that mean <laughs> does that mean this isn't good is it not good like what you know is it gonna make things worse better um so of course I sat on the couch all day and freaked out and today I had my second ultrasound and set of blood work um I'm on day six of the stimulation medication so they were just making sure that there were eggs growing and that 
they're at the right speed and that they're not progressing too fast or too slow. Um, uh, next will be Thursday. We have our, I have my last um, ultrasound and blood work appointment, hopefully, um, just to make sure everything looks good before the egg retrieval at the beginning of next week. The third ultrasound, the ovaries looked way bigger. I could absolutely see what she was measuring then. So today in the office, I came in for hopefully my last ultrasound and blood work and um, in a couple days, hopefully I'll do my trigger shot and they'll bring me in to retrieve the eggs. Um, am I nervous? I am the most nervous I think I've ever been in my life. <laughs> really nervous just trying to stay busy and not sit at home and, you know, think about things and putting my phone on airplane mode so I can't Google anything because <laughs> don't, don't do that. That's an awful thing to do. Um, but yeah, just keeping busy and looking forward to having a week off from work and hoping this goes well. So if everything comes back today um, normal like it should, then um, I'll probably do the trigger shot um, hopefully this weekend sometime. I'm not really sure on the timeline. And then early next week, they'll bring me in for the egg retrieval. And then during that week, they'll fertilize them, um, see how they grow. And then at the end of next week, hopefully they'll do the embryo transfer. And then that's it. And then we wait <laughs> to make sure that it goes the way it should. They do this all the time. And you know, they just make you feel like you are fine, that everything is fine and that life is going to be okay. Um, right now, Kaylin's getting prepped for uh, the egg retrieval, so she's just uh, giving some last minute things, signing some stuff, and waiting for the anesthesiologist because it's, uh, yeah, we're going to retrieve the eggs in a, in a couple minutes. I am feeling a little nervous today. <laughs> it's a little bit of a different appointment than the rest of them, so definitely nervous, but I know I'm in good hands, so I'm not too nervous. Just. Anxious. Anxious is a good word for it. Yeah. Uh, I remember at this point being a little nervous just because of the anesthesia and stuff, but I don't remember any of it. Now seeing all of the tools that they use during the egg retrieval. Whew, you're you're glad really, you're out. Yeah, really you're. glad you're not <laughs> awake for it because that looks pretty intimidating. Is yeah. That doesn't look like it should do what they did with it. It's like but, a, an cool. orchestra baton. <laughs> it does. Yeah, no. You're not awake for any of that, so you'll never even see that. Waking up from the egg retrieval is no big deal. An easy recovery. We were in there yeah. for a little bit and then we got to go home. Mm -hmm. We had to go through the ICSI process, which is instead of just putting the egg and the sperm together in a dish, they actually inject a sperm into each egg, so it's crazy. Yeah, they literally that's... take a needle, poke it through the side of the egg, and push a sperm to the like, inside of it. So they fertilized 10 and then 8 actually fertilized, That's which was way more than we ever thought we would get. He's fertilizing each one on its own, pushing it out of the way and grabbing the next one. Today is the transfer. But as far as today, it was just, um, I had to drink two bottles of water before now and then you have to keep a full bladder so that sucks for right now but <laughs> it'll be okay and then um you're supposed to take a volume about a half hour before so i just took that um so hopefully that kicks in so soon pretty good I, soon. I won't remember how much i have to go to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs>
Today, we're looking for, ideally, we're looking for a six to eight cell embryo. We're taking eight, or I'm sorry, two of our eight embryos. Going through the actual transfer, that's no different than like a normal, like annual appointment um, at your normal doctor. You don't even really feel what they're doing. Um, but they put them in this little, this long, thin, Syringe, it looks like a needle, it's not a needle, it's plastic. And they put them in your uterus and hope that they stick once they're in there. You get at the end, um... He explains, yeah, he explains everything that's going on on the screen because it's kind of hard to distinguish what's actually there. Um, I'll show you, like, you have to go with the full bladder. So, like, he showed, uh where her full bladder was and then he showed where the ovaries would be which is really hard to see and then he shows exactly where he um, transferred the embryos in and then he prints that screen for you and you get to take it home. Uh, so hopefully that becomes really the second the picture, right? The first picture is when you get to see the microscopic view of them before the transfer and then hopefully that becomes the first ultrasound that you have of them and you get to see them more and more from there. Absolutely. Right? But that wasn't a big deal at all. The volume helps. <laughs> Hoping that they stick and then we come back in two weeks and find out if it's positive or negative. At this point we are about, I believe this is nine days past the embryo transfer. So we're kind of right in the middle of the two weeks that you have to wait before you go back for your test. Um, I'm not going to say that it's a walk in the park because it is absolutely not. It's it's hard. Some days are really good, some days are really bad. Um, but you just pray and hopefully in two weeks you get that good news. The time does go by though. <laughs> you don't think it's going to go by, but it goes by. So, we'll see what happens. Very positive though. Obviously, very positive. <laughs> <laughs>